Um, next, we have with us our guest of honor, um, His Excellency uh, Ahmed Sultan Al Falahi, Commercial Attaché, Minister of Plenipotentiary from the Embassy of UAE. Over to you, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I'd like to thank the patron and the president of IICB, uh, Mr. Noor Al Amin as well as a special thanks to our friend, uh, Mr. Talha Sarishwala. Uh, we've had a few dealings with him in the past and uh, he is one of the main reasons actually that we are here today as well. Uh, to start off, I'd like to congratulate the IICB on uh, the opening of the office and the formation and having a community, a business community uh, set up uh, that is trying to adhere by the Islamic Sharia laws and uh, trying to create, uh, how can I put it? Uh, trying to create uh, a shell or an area for uh, the Muslim community. And I do believe also the non-Muslim community when it comes to trade, it's not about being Muslim or non-Muslim. There are the Muslim teachings of trade, which is famous, giving the product, the product its real worth. If you're buying it or if you're selling it, you don't buy something of someone, you tell them, no, it's only 10 rupees and you know it's actually worth 100 rupees. That is also, you know, that is also uh, disliked. Uh, I can't say haram, but uh, I'm not a mufti, but that is disliked by, uh, uh, by our teachings and by our prophets' teachings and the religions uh, and by the Quran itself. But uh, so that is one thing, as well as you know, the modern world. There's a lot of riba going along, uh, around, a lot of interest. So how to mold that into something that is more suited for the Islamic uh, way of doing uh, trade and finance, in which uh, a lot of banks have, especially in the region. We have, like for example, in the OE, we have the first. Islamic Bank, Dubai Islamic Bank. It's the first Islamic bank in the modern history that we have set up. And now a lot of conventional banks, international banks are also offering the, what they call the halal window because they can see the benefits of having those halal transactions as it is a win-win situation for both. And if there's a loss, there's a minimum loss on both, as you may say. So that is one good thing. Uh, going back again, jumping into UAE, India relations, our relations goes not tens of years, not hundreds of years, actually thousands of years. And uh, when our first sailors came to shore to India, they came as tradesmen. Islam has been uh, spread across the world mainly, not by the sword as a lot of media stipulates. It's been spread by trade, by honest business dealings, by people feeling, you know, falling in love with the teachings of these people that are really honest, they come in no harm, and they want a benefit for both societies and communities. So, uh, our links started as you know trading links, and you know Islam reached all the way to Indonesia and beyond. It didn't reach there by sword. It reached there by the trade people from the Arabian Peninsula, getting all the way there in search of new trade routes, new uh, supplies, and opening up new markets. So we've been on this course for hundreds and thousands of years. In the modern history, our relationship as modern nations, UAE and the Republic of India, uh, has always been there. From $180 million when the UAE was first formed in 1971, till today it's 60 billion US dollars. It's estimately 60 billion US dollars. And that is the third high, uh, the third, uh, we are the third trading partner with India and with a trade the deficit, which is, you can say, 
it's a close to zero trade deficit between two nations. One year, India has the trade deficit. The next year, UAE has the trade deficit. And we're speaking about a billion dollars, half a billion dollars of trade deficit, that's it. So we actually complement each other in uh, the means of trade. We are the world's gateway into India, and we are India's gateway to the world and to the regional markets as well. As well as the uh, government relationship picking up drastically in the past few years. Uh, since the 80s, the government relations really didn't uh, pick up, but the people-to-people -people relations is the thing that drives this. That's why I say trade is the best means of two nations coming together, prospering, and people really uh, clicking with, with each other. That is one of the things. Going to, uh, UA, uh, going to the uh, UAE and the Islamic uh, economy that's been initiated and launched by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. Currently, the UAE ranks second on the Global Islamic Economy Index, only, you know, second to Malaysia only. Uh, and, you know, we, are, we, are, we, have set the, uh, we have set the aim to becoming number one as His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Rajad Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai and the Prime, uh, Prime Minister of UAE, Vice President of UAE, he wants us always to strive for the best. So we reach, so we could reach up there eventually. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, he's launched a lot of new initiatives and regulations uh, that has come up to boost our standings and so that we be leaders in the field especially when it comes also to the Islamic way of uh, investments, banking, all, all of that. As for the investment opportunities in the UAE Islamic economy, it's estimated at around 23 billion US dollars. And with export op opportunities from the UAE to the OIC countries, having reached 10.6 billion US dollars. And we only strive to grow that and increase that because our aim is being um, a hub between the east and the west and now with the covid situation the unfortunate pandemic that we're going through we're also a hub to the region because if india wants to increase its uh, if the indian businessman wants to increase his sales wants to increase his exports especially now, in, this, in these three to maximum five years, where globalization is taking a back seat and regionalization is coming forward, the UAE is in the right position for that. Why? Because when we say regionalization, i.e. four hours, three to four hours by plane, in which we cover Africa from UAE and we cover India from the UAE. So the UAE is a transitional hub of business and trade of, and goods because of the connectivity, the banking system. It's much easier for the, Indi uh, for the Indian company, which is established in the UAE, for example, or having an office in the UAE, uh, a sales rep or whatever, and doing its trade with Africa, getting the money from Africa back to that sales office account, and then from there back to India is much faster than doing it from India to Africa. Because in some instances, the Indian banks and the RBI doesn't acknowledge the easy transactions from Africa because of so many uh, concerns. And then there's also, you know, I think they've reached a matter of a couple of hours from transferring from UAE to uh, India, as well as the currency swap uh, agreement that we have signed, which also facilitates a lot of that. So for the business community, the businessmen, it's much easier, faster, safer approach. And then, you know, uh, we have the uh, UAE embassy, especially in the UAE trade office, which I run. We are here to assist the Indian chambers in any way possible. So now we've got a new chamber, which has joined the foray, which is the IICD, and we're proud to have uh, that as well. Uh, and we're here to, you know, see what are the future opportunities, what are the B2B opportunities, or 
if we have a delegation coming to India or a delegation going from India to UAE, how can we assist putting you in contact with the right people in the UAE to assist you? So, uh, but currently with these, uh, as I said, uh, post-COVID situation, uh, physical uh, interactions are uh, being kept to a minimum, but we are here to assist you. We are here to uh, help you whenever you require that uh, and need us. If we can't provide any assistance, we would do so. If we can't, but we know someone else, we will guide you to that person. You know, that's the least we can do. Because our aim is to grow the trade between our two nations. And over, other than that, sorry to take a long time, uh, wishing you all the success and wishing the Indian Islamic Chamber of Commerce Bureau all the success and hope. And uh, I believe now you said you have around 500 uh, members. I hope to see lakhs and lakhs of members very soon, inshallah. 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 Thank you very much.